do this on your own. There is no button. There is no tab. There is nothing. You can't go to your campaign manager and see DSP. This is something that you, if you're a big brand, you can go to Amazon Direct and pay through the nose. Hey everyone, this is Norm Ferrar, aka The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA. Today, we're going to be talking about something that is hot. Nope, it's not AI, it's DSP. A lot of acronyms here, but anyways, it's going to be the complete Amazon DSP checklist. Today, we're going to be discussing what exactly DSP is. A lot of people don't know how it's different from PPC, and why your brand should be using it. So welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. Okay, so today, like I said, we're going to be discussing DSP, and we have a special guest with us today. Uh, our guest is the Client Service Director at Turnkey Product Management. She has been working at Turnkey for over six years now and has worked with a variety of different brands on Amazon, helping them to grow to over eight figures. Our guest today is Jenna Lieber, and we'll be getting to Jenna in just a second, but we're going to have a word from our sponsor. This episode of Lunch with Norm is sponsored by VAA Philippines. Looking for a high quality virtual assistant for your business? With the rigorous screening, intensive Amazon and Walmart training, and ongoing professional development, get the peace of mind with skill and motivated virtual assistants for a long-term working relationship. Hire through VAA today, and now let's get back to the show. Let's bring in Jenna. Hello. Uh, How are you? How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fine, thanks. So you're not in California. I am not. No, That's I am in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. We yeah. have our, um, our just... fulfillment center in, um, in uh, Nazareth. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I just moved back actually like two months ago. Um, I, w I went to school here, met my fiance here. Then we, we moved to California and then we just moved back, uh, back in June. So I'm just getting resettled in and all that stuff. So. Oh, very, very good. Okay. Yeah. So today we're talking about one of my favorites. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty weird when you get excited about DSP, but, uh, <laughs> but anyways, we've had, we've got a lot of DSP clients and I can tell you that we always, we always say, Oh, you know, just be prepared. You're going to go negative for a little while. Uh, it might go negative. We have had 100% success rate right from the very first month going forward with DSP. It's, it is, for uh, return on investment, one of the best things that uh, we have for our clients. Absolutely. Yeah, it's definitely a really great tool. And what I think makes it extra special is obviously it's not something that everyone has access to. So right. kind of like what you're talking about with, you know, tools and all that, you know, I think a big part of that is because it's not just accessible to anybody. It's definitely something that you have to look to find and get access to. Right. And Jenna, just so you know, I do double fist. So if you see me switching from coffee to Coke, it's, I need all the caffeine I can get. Okay. So um, anyways, why don't we start with what is the acronym and what does it do? Sure. Yeah. So DSP stands for um, Amazon Demand Side Platform. Essentially what DSP is, is you are buying display ads, um, video ads, and audio ads on and off Amazon. So it has a lot of um, versatility, um, I would argue. Um, it's off Amazon placements, um, kind of include a variety of different Amazon owns websites apps, devices, uh, their streaming services. Um, just can, can you give us a couple of examples? Yeah. So like, for example, like obviously like one of the big ones that comes to mind is their streaming service, right? Um, where you can watch um, 
Prime, right? Yeah. Um, but then one thing that's kind of interesting is Amazon owns a lot of websites. Um, like I actually think they own, um, if for students going back to school, they own, I think, Blackboard maybe, or maybe a version of that where people like submit their their homework and stuff. So there's a lot of websites that Amazon owns that we might not have necessarily normal knowledge of that, but you can buy there as well. Um, their apps, again, their apps that they own. So that could be anything from um, their Amazon app. Um, but then there's also like, you were talking about Amazon Live, I think a little bit earlier. Yep. Um, so different things like that. Um, and then when talking about off Amazon, there's like a long list, just so you're clear. Like I don't have the list in front of me, but it's massive. The list that you can do off of Amazon. And then the on Amazon placements, they're going to vary. So you can get Amazon's homepage, product detail pages, deals pages, search results pages. So there really is a lot of versatility and it is able to really get in front of those customers that maybe they've seen your product and you're bringing them back. Or maybe it's new customers that hadn't seen your product and you're introducing them to your brand. So how does that work? Uh, they have the retargeting side of the app, which if, if somebody visits your page, then it'll start displaying. Mm -hmm. Then I guess it's the, if somebody's searching for a competitor, they'll also start flashing your uh, ads in, in the display network as well, right? Yes. So it's going to be based, obviously, so I will, I would argue that every single brand that we work with has a very different DSP strategy. And that could be for a number of reasons. So one, audience size is critical when it comes to DSP. So some of our brands might have a very different retargeting strategy than others just because of the number of people going to their listing. So the higher number of people that go to your listing, the stronger your retargeting model can be because you can have different look back windows. So those look back windows can vary between like 15 days to 90 days. Obviously for, for most people, we want them to come back within two weeks, 15 days, right? Cause that's, you know, the, the likelihood of them purchasing is higher than if our retargeting is 90 days out, right? Cause by 90 days mark, they might've forgotten about you. Right. They're on your listing what what have you um but then there's the competitor aspect of things right where you can target your competitors to try to steal traffic from them um there's searches where you can target audiences that have searched um for keywords related to selected products you can do subscribe and save and release targeting um product views and that's what we've already touched on but then the reason i say you know with all of our brands there really is different strategy because for those, especially that have repeat purchase products, we generally will retarget past purchasers. So that opens up another audience as well. And then there also is something called similar product views, mm -hmm. where if someone viewed a similar product, we can target them as well. But again, what makes DSB so interesting is it's not as simple as, okay, here's our list of keywords. Here's what we're going to target you have to go and find those audiences that fit the strategy that you're looking for. Right. Exactly. Uh, okay. One of the things I want to mention is just to anybody who's listening, we've got a bunch of people that are listening right now. Um, if you do have questions about DSP, don't be shy. Let us know if you're using DSP, let us know how it's working out for you. I know that it's working really well for all of our clients and uh, uh, which leads to the next question about uh, DSP where can you find DSP in seller central? Just a trick question. <laughs> so it is not located in seller central. So DSP is interesting. You either need to find an agency that is approved to mm -hmm. be involved with DSP and has access to it, or you go through Amazon. Um, What's the difference? The <laughs> so with us, for example, we do it. Um, we could do it for as little as like a $500 trial because, you know, it, it could vary, right? Like you're talking about return on investment. Like we've seen massive returns on investment while others, it's a bit more conservative, still good, you know, still a positive, 
but it's not as big as maybe they thought or whatever. So with us, we're able to do a target of like, you know, 500 to a thousand bucks, see if you like it and then we can scale from there. But if you go directly through Amazon, um, we've seen Amazon give clients a bill between 30 to $50,000 saying, this is the ad spend you want. Now, we all know Amazon, like if you're listening on this, you at least have some idea of how they operate. They want you to spend money. So what we've seen is when Amazon is running your DSP, they are not going for that conservative approach where they're going for the best targets possible. They're just like this widespread net and they're not concerned on your return on investment. So that's why they're like, yep, give us 30 to 50 grand because they will spend it. Oh yeah. Um, but it's not necessarily going to always bring back the best return. So. Uh, can I say happily, happily spend it? I, I, um, I'm so sorry. What, what uh, are you they, referring to? The- Am- Amazon will happily spend oh, yes, your 30 to 50,000. But it, it, it was uh, for the most part set up for larger brands. Uh, you'd had to uh, enroll in the program. You'd have to spend at least 30,000 bucks. And then they started to divide it up into what's called a fractional DSP, which allows agencies like yours uh, to go out and offer this service uh, to companies, to, uh, to smaller brands. And small, I'm not talking about new brands. I do not recommend, and I, I think you would agree, uh, a small brand, this is not for. Uh, I usually look at uh, 15 to 20 units a day, would you say? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely agree with that because there's also like rules, right? Like you can't participate in DSP till you've got the 15 reviews. Yeah. And then on top of that, you've got to be at 3.5 stars or higher on your review count uh, or rating, sorry. So I would agree that a lot of the times our new brands, we will say like, let's revisit in 90 days, see where we are at. That's generally our rule as well. Yeah, and this is uh, this is interesting. So you do have a brand, you do have a lot of, uh, let's say that you have a 4.4 star uh, rating and you've been doing quite well. Now, can you use DSP as part of your launch strategy? Can you add a new a- uh, uh, SKU or ASIN? And <clears throat> even though it's new, can you add it to your platform? Yes, but the targeting is going to be different. So what you would basically have to do is rely on your current live products and cross promote would be probably the first approach. And again, that's, the conservative way of looking at it right like in theory you could go out and create massive audiences like you can go get in segment targeting demographic targeting you could do all those things um but is the return going to be as high you don't necessarily know right? right because you're talking cold traffic versus warmed up traffic they're aware of your brand they know who you are so in that case if you're launching a new product and you've already been on amazon you have a solid audience in that case, we would probably look at cross promotion. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I think you would still have to wait for the 15 reviews. Um, but again, if it's a newer product, that would probably be our initial strategy is let's cross promote, see if we can get people to buy both. Yeah. Get some data and, uh, mm-hmm. okay. So look at, I'm looking at Luke, Simon, uh, Andrew, Marsha, uh, oh, Steve's on as well. Uh, guys, you're in the comment section. Love to get a comment about uh, if you're using DSP or not. Uh, if you're not, why not? I, all of you, like anybody that's in, uh, anyone that I'm looking at in the comment section, I know you've got the uh, the selling uh, power to do it. Um, so kind of interested in, to see if you're um, if you are using DSP. Okay, so now let's talk about. We've just talked about what you need and what it costs uh, to do DSP. Why should brands or what brands should not use DSP? Definitely a challenging question. Um, I mean, in my opinion, the clients that do the best, the brands that do the best are the ones that have repeat purchase products or they're able to cross promote where you're able to use your audience and try to convince them to buy something else. Now, brands that I've seen 
not do as hot mm -hmm. are generally products that are more expensive, uh, generally like a one-time buy type of product. Those are the ones that I see it's harder. It's harder to get that return that you want. It's harder to find the right audiences. I wouldn't necessarily necessarily say, oh, you're doomed. It's never going to work out or anything like that. Um, it's just going to be harder. It's going to be more challenging to find the right audience that works for you. Because with DSP, it's just like PPC or any other type of advertising, you need to test in order to be successful. But with DSP, you are at the mercy of the audiences you've built and the audiences you have access to. So it's not as simple as, okay, we need to add more keywords, we need to do this or that. You really are at the mercy of what audiences are available and what audiences make sense. Okay. That kind of, that leads me to my next question. The difference between DSP and PPC, uh, a lot of sellers get those mixed up. Now is a it is very different. Can you tell us uh, exactly why it's different or how it's different? Sure. So PPC, obviously that's located in Seller Central. That's done by yourself in your Seller Central account. Um, obviously there's different targeting options for PPC. There, there's plenty of targeting options, but for the most part, PPC is reliant on keywords, right? right? For the most part, obviously they've opened things up. They now have display ads and things like that, but for the most part, it is all about keywords, right? So that's one of the bigger things where DSP is based off of your audiences on, uh, again, people that have been to your page, people that have viewed your page, people that have purchased, people that look at your competitors. We, we already went through the audiences, so I don't, I guess I don't need to go back and circle back, but really the targeting options are very different. Um, but then the, the big difference is PPC is cost per click. So with PPC, you are not paying a dime unless they click on that ad. Whereas DSP is cost per impression. So once there is an impression made, that is when you pay. Um, so that's, that's kind of the differences mainly is the targeting options and then just also how they operate um, in terms of charging you. How do you know? So with PP, uh, with PPC, uh, we've had a lot of different PPC people on here and they've given us KPIs and you know, for the most part, what your return is. Uh, how can you tell if you're making a difference or if you're wasting your money? Like what yeah, are the KPIs? I, yeah. I mean, so I always tell all my brands before you get involved with any type of advertising, we need to set our KPIs. Because I will tell you right now, I mean, as for as long as I've been doing this, everyone has such a different outlook on what is success, right? Um, I, I had one brand that I worked with for years. They wanted 100% ACOS, which to me, it's like, oh my gosh, like we don't want that, right? We don't want 100% ACOS. That means that means it's equal. It means we're not, you know, we're not getting a return, but we're not losing, but it's, you know, not, not, not necessarily what we need, but for them, they had this big, big initiative, this big marketing tactic, and it worked for them. Like mm -hmm. that 100% ACOS for that year or two, it worked for them. Like they are now at Target and Costco and all these places, like they are now big. Um, but that was part of their marketing strategy. Right. So, um, I always feel like, you know, those, KPIs as perimeters definitely are brand specific, but generally what we look at is a couple of different things. So first, uh, the, the bet at a minimum, I want the ROAS at a two. That's like the minimum, right? Because to us, like that's at least like we've got our foot in the door. We're working on some things like that's good, right? Obviously, I want it a lot higher than a two ROAS, but I feel like that's a a good minimum, a good starting point. This is a, you know, a good, good place to start. Um, a couple of other metrics that I like to look at are, is our subscribe and saves up, right? Like, is that number increasing? Cause that's a really great KPI to look out for that. Um, DSP does track. Um, but then also I always kind of think of it like, you know, again, it is possible that maybe the attribution window was missed with DSP. Someone could have come back and subscribed later. So if those subscriptions are going up as you start DSP, that's a really good indicator. 
obviously are your sales increasing at a higher rate than they normally would month over month, week over week, all of that stuff. So that's another indicator as well. Obviously DSP, it's just like PPC where it's going to show you, okay, here's what you spent. Here is the return. So you also can look at that metric as well on what is the return on ad spend. So there are different key metrics. And then again, I would argue uh, repeat purchase products. They have kind of that one up where they can say, okay, subscriptions are higher or not higher or whatever. So I always like to look at subscribe and save numbers as well. Right. Okay. Uh, let me see. What time is it? We are getting to the bottom of the hour. All right. We're getting, so you got through round one. Uh, we are at the bottom of the hour. And if you are listening for the first time, we have something at the top of the hour called the wheel of Kelsey. And that is a giveaway. So, um, if you've never listened to the podcast, uh, it's hashtag wheel of Kelsey. If you tag two people, you get a second entry today. We've got a double prize, actually a triple prize. So why don't you tell people you've got one for everybody. So why don't you tell uh, um, uh, the audience exactly what we've got today? Yeah, so we're offering this um, for everybody. We want everyone to be able to take advantage of it, especially as we are heading into quarter four, which is insane. Um, but basically, we are offering um, an audit or a breakthrough if, session, if you will. Um, by going to turnkeyproductmanagement.com slash talk. And basically what we will do um, for that is you will meet with one of our Amazon experts. We go through a 42 point listing audit checklist, run a competitor revenue analysis, um, and then you know create a custom Amazon revenue growth guarantee. So that's what you can find again if you go to turnkeyproductmanagement.com slash talk um you can go ahead and book uh, a chance to meet with an expert um within honestly this week it looks like we have some slots available so um okay. you guys can get that scheduled all right and on top of that what we're doing is we're going to be providing a press release so a press release with the distribution for free and a 1500 word blog article. All you need to do is provide us with a little bit of information and sit back, relax. We'll uh, provide that for you. So if you're interested in this, uh, just hashtag Willa Kelsey, tag two people and you'll get a second entry. Uh, by the way, the value, I don't know about the audit, but the value of the press release and the blog article is roughly $500. Okay. So Kelsey, are you ready? Hit the button. Let's go to a sponsor. This episode of Lunch with Norm is sponsored by SureGo Marketing. Ready to take your brand to the next level on TikTok and Instagram? SureGo Marketing specializes in helping entrepreneurs and coaches build profitable brands on TikTok and Instagram and in less than 90 days. With SureGo Marketing, you can build your brand, create incredible video content, and increase leads without spending a single dime on ad spend. Visit SureGoMarketing.com today and elevate your brand. Now, let's get back to the show. All right, there we go. I'm curious about... Uh, this setup. So uh, I'm, I'm very involved with DSP. So I understand, but a lot of the times, um, I'll get questions uh, about how the setup, uh, how you do the setup. Is it just automated? Um, so everybody is familiar. If you're not familiar when you're setting up DSP through a fractional agency, though, there's most likely a flat fee or a flat fee, flea, flea, a flat fee, a fat, a fat fee. Help me with this, Jenna. What am I trying to say? A flat fee plus a percentage of sales plus ad spend. It just depends on the agency. Um, a lot of people think that this is completely automated and that, you know, I have a hard time spending money on a flat fee when it's completely automated. Talk about that. When you're doing campaigns, what type of manual labor is there uh, involved? Are you overlooking it? Or 
is it true? Is it just automated? Yeah. So with DSP specifically, it's, it's just a little different than PPC in the sense that you really need to go and find those audiences. So what our advertising team is doing when they are working on DSP is trying to find those right audiences. So they do use, um, DSP's demand side platform. That's, that's what you use. And basically they're trying to look and run the audiences and what it makes the most sense. So one really great example is let's say you have collagen, you're selling collagen, yep. you've got a 30 day supply. Like, let's say that's, that's what it says. Right. So basically what our team would be looking at is this product specifically, if we want to bring back past purchasers, we don't want to bring them back after two weeks, right? Because they're not going to need that collagen in two weeks. So what the strategy behind that would be, okay, we need a campaign set up to bring them back in 30 days. So that's just kind of a simple example that kind of everyone can understand and relate to where it's just like, okay, we need to bring them back at the right time. So that's what our team is doing. So basically building up those audiences, trying to bring customers back at the right time when they are ready to actually pull the trigger. Um, DSP is definitely not set up as a one and done type of thing. You need to be constantly running your audiences, trying to see are there other new categories or not categories, audiences that have opened up. So that is generally what that would look like in terms of running the account. So it's, it's not, oh, there's a checkbox. Let's click it and let it run automatically. No, definitely not. There's, there's strategy behind it. And, and just, again, it's, it's just like all of you guys that when you've set up your Amazon listing, right? You could argue, oh, you set that up. You're one and done. It's, it's good to go. Totally not the case, right? Like, you know, there's always so many different things coming into play with our Amazon listings and with Amazon in general that, you know, it's, it, it's a constant thing. It's constant maintenance. And then always just looking for the next thing that you can do to, you know, grow and to scale. So not all DSP agencies are the same. I don't know. I mean, I, I would argue no agency is ever the same, you know, everyone's got different things going on. Um, you know, I would say that there are definitely agencies out there that rely more on technology than others. Um, you know, with the way AI is heading, like, is that a good or bad thing? I think that, that could be a whole other podcast, I'm sure. Right. So, oh, yeah. um, you know, I think ultimately it's always important to look for an agency that they're looking for the next big thing. They're not stagnant. They're not just, you know, letting you plateau. The ultimate goal needs to be, what are we doing to get to that next level, to get that next sale? Um, it's all needs to be about scaling, you know, cause Amazon, Amazon's always moving. So as a seller on it, you need to be moving as well. Right. Uh, let me see. I'm going to go back to PPC for a second. Uh, we talked about the differences, but does DSP replace Amazon's PPC? No, no, definitely not. Um, we always like to refer to DSP as the assist. So. The way we see it is if PPC does not convince them, PPC doesn't get the final sale. DSP is there to swoop in behind and try to bring them back, try to get them to purchase. Now, obviously there are times when DSP is used to introduce a brand, right? That, that is possible where you could be taking competitor traffic. You could be looking at in segment targets or demographics or things like that, but DSP is really great at playing assist to PPC. So we always tell people you need to be doing both. You should not just be reliant on DSP by itself. Okay. And one of the other things I, I just want to, to bring out that you brought up a little bit earlier is uh, the cost again. So to get into DSP, to test it out, to see if you can do this, you cannot do this on your own. There is no button. There is no tab. There is nothing. You can't go to your campaign manager and see DSP. This is something that you, if you're a big brand, you can go to Amazon Direct and pay through the nose. Uh, and or you can go to a fractional agency like you have and um, work with a work with a uh, 
a new client. And if you do that, they don't have to end up spending tens of thousands of dollars. I saw a comment from Simon thinking it's very expensive. Um, you can test out the campaign and now every agency is different, but you said you could run campaigns, start off at a thousand bucks and just see how that goes. Uh, typically the, the, the campaign ad spend at the beginning, you're probably looking at a few thousand dollars though. Is that right? And then grow. So, yeah, it, it really depends on the brand. So mm -hmm. we actually offer at turnkey, what we call a DSP trial mm -hmm. where, um, we will do a two month trial to see if you like DSP. Cause we do know that it is weird, right? Like, especially for Amazon sellers, they're used to seeing, even if they have a PPC agency, they see everything. Like yeah. it's all in there. Like PPC agencies cannot hide where DSP, it is weird. Like that you can't see what's happening. You can't log in and see the day to day. So, um, we do offer a trial that only requires $500 ad spend for the first two months. Um, now, but do, do you get any results on that? 500 yeah, is pretty absolutely. cheap. Yeah, absolutely. We, we've definitely seen solid results. And um, part of that is a, a 2.0 ROAS guarantee. So that's the initial. And the idea is you can see, is this working for you? Now, I will definitely say we've got plenty of people that the 500 goes quick. Yep. And we've, you know, talked to them and decided together, you know what, let's bump this up to a thousand, then 1500, you know? So uh, we have a variety of brands spending different amounts of money per month. I would argue that most clients are spending at least a thousand. That $500 for a DSP trial does not last long. I will say a lot of people yeah. at that point usually scale up. Um, I would say that at a minimum, people are spending a thousand dollars per month on DSP, but we also have clients that are spending, you know, 10 to $15,000 a month. So, um, what I would say is that DSP is a fit, uh, even for those brands that aren't considered large, which again, I think is subjective. Everyone can have a different idea of who's large and who's not. Um, but you know, with, with DSP, you could start at that lower amount. And then it's, again, it's all about reevaluating what strategies can we implement? How can we scale it? Um, ultimately. I, I've got a, a couple of stories about uh, DSP and it, it's crazy. Now I don't typically uh, measure it from ROAS, but at the, the same time, here's an example of ROAS. Uh, we had a, a, a company I won't mention any brand names. Uh, they might be listening, but there was a 25 times, well, it, was, it was 25 times. So their row as 25 to one. Uh, that's not bad. I think you would consider 25 to one is not a bad amount for row as, right? Right. No, it's definitely that, solid. That's Absolutely. probably on the home run yeah. <laughs> scale. Yeah. They quit. They quit and I'm sitting there going, what do you mean for every $1 you're getting $25 roughly? Uh, and they just, they just thought that like you were saying, they didn't get the same reporting. They couldn't see it in their seller center. We were providing them with, with reports, but they wanted specific reports. And because we couldn't provide certain reports, they ended up saying, oh, we can't really do it. On the other hand, we had uh, a, a, a somebody that started uh, with us and it was uh, very low. Uh, it started out a few thousand bucks uh, over three to six months. We got them up to $15,000 in ad spend. And when I last checked, it was 150,000 now. So if something's working and you're driving a ton of uh, sales or traffic over to, to uh, Amazon, it's just a way to experiment. So like you were saying, if you're getting those first two months and you can check this out to see if uh, you can get two or three or four or seven times ROAS, then why not? And then just expand. I, I don't know about you, but probably most of the companies that you work with, you've probably seen expansion in ad spend because it's working for them. So Yes, yeah. 
that that's ultimately the goal right so yeah we always say you're starting at a certain amount like we do have minimums that we're like you gotta at least be spending this yep but yeah i mean the goal is i want this to work for you guys we and we want it to get to a point where you are reinvesting because it's so good right like that's that's the goal so have you absolutely. ever seen uh right off the beginning because i I always say, just like PPC, look, we've got to understand, we've got to build the audience, like you were saying. Um, but have you ever seen just clients that bomb? Like they they try it out and they just bomb? On DSP specifically, yeah. you're saying. Yeah. So the the one that, that, that kind of goes back to what we were talking about, where it's like, oh, like, you know, have we seen it not work? And the one that comes to mind is, a very expensive product. Like the product was over a thousand dollars. It's definitely a product that you are buying this one time. Like, I hope you don't have to buy it twice because it's expensive. Right. So that's really the only time I'm just like, this did not work. Um, this was not a fit. Um, but now we know that as an agency, we know that. And when we're having discussion and that's why that trial is good for a lot of brands, because especially for those because a lot of people don't know about DSP. Like, right. it's very common for our team to get on calls and be like, what? Like, people don't know what it is, and, and that's okay. So that's why we offer that trial is just because people are don't understand it. They don't know what it is. And um, in in that case, that, that very expensive product, you know, it, it just, we came to terms for like, this wasn't a fit, and that is okay. Um, Luckily, there's lots of options on um, yeah. with marketing in general. So, um, yeah. I, I just find that sometimes uh, with Amazon sellers, just in a nutshell, especially if they're newer, they're trying to hold back on spending. But there's a place to spend money and there's a place to cut back on money. And I find that there are some sellers that do the absolute opposite. They do a 180. They're spending on all the bad crap and they don't put it towards anything that could really expand their brand. So uh, anyway, I, like I said, I'm a big fan of DSP. I know that we have, wow, holy crap. We have a lot of questions. Okay, why don't we get to some questions, Kels? So these aren't all questions. These are just comments about Okay, DSP. oh, geez, I had a heart attack when I saw those questions. <laughs> all right, so uh, let me see. I'll try and get... So from Simon, um, this was from the beginning of the podcast. He just doesn't understand DSP and um, that it was sounding expensive. Um, Twilight Action was saying we haven't really had the budget for it, but uh, but it's on the radar. And so uh, I, I'm kind of curious. First of all, um, Simon, I, I understand that a lot of people have misconceptions about what DSP is, but hopefully um, during this podcast, uh, you know, Jenna's been able to help explain it a bit. Um, and just, uh, let you know, it's not PPC. It's, it's more of a display network, uh, a demand network, uh, where your, your ads are seen outside. Well, sometimes on Amazon, but outside of the Amazon network as well. But, uh, as for the expense, uh, you've got a, you've got a really great option where you test a product for a very low amount. And you have that two times row as guarantee, which is which is great. So you're not, you don't have to worry about spending a ton of money at one. I don't have any connection with your company, by the way. There's no affiliate fee. There's nothing like that. <coughs> but anyways, I just know from DSP that uh, you know if you can do it for a couple of months and see if it works for you, it is a different way to get a few more sales. So uh, don't think that it has to be uber expensive. Uh, you can definitely uh, spend a whole bunch of money if you want to with some agencies or go to Amazon Direct and you can spend 30 to 50 grand. But with the fractional DSP, you have much more control over your budget. Okay, uh, comment from CoolHand99. Uh, I've not been using DSP, but I've found my product on sites that are owned by Amazon. Is that Amazon just promoting my product on their own accord? If uh, just general, I'm not sure who's going to take it, but yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, yeah. it is Amazon just promoting your product. Just yeah, like if you see it on Google. You know, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. It's Google. You see them all the time. So yeah, I think you will see Amazon will do that on your own accord, but you don't have control over it, obviously. Right. They can stop that as quickly as they started it. So, but yeah, that's a good question. 
All right, and another comment from Marsha. Uh, very interested, uh, but need to rebuild traction after multiple delistings on her site. Um, so from Twilight Action, uh, Jenna, what do you think is a realistic budget for a small brand? So yeah, I mean, I honestly think 500 bucks, that's a great starting point for um, a smaller brand. I think you can start there, see if it's working out for you. And if it's not, you can just reinvest that next 500 bucks into your PPC ad spend the following month. I think it's very realistic just to see, is DSP a fit? Am I able to scale it at that $500 amount? And then you can always put more into it. Um, I know that at Turnkey, every single month we reevaluate those goals. Uh, we, ju we just look at it and we're like, okay, what do you want to spend this month? What are our goals this month? Um, because I mean, honestly, like, you know, with every single quarter, there's brings new challenges. Everyone has seasonality to some degree. So um, that's something that we reevaluate personally um, every single month. Right. Okay, uh, from Simon, let's say you have a product that's doing monthly sales of 20 to 30K on Amazon with a tacos of around 12% and a net profit of 15 to 20%. Will running DSP increase or decrease that net percentage uh, in monthly sales? And why not just run Google or Facebook ads instead or separately? I'd be doing it yeah. all. <laughs> um. So, I, I mean, I personally think that DSP should help increase your net percentage. And the only reason why is because if DSP is working in your favor, it ultimately should be growing your total sales, right? It shouldn't be taking away, um, especially when we're talking about the different returns that, you know, you and I have talked about today on this call is, you know, at the end of the day, if you're putting in a dollar and getting back five or 10 or whatever, realistically, it should only be helping you. It should not be, you know, hurting the percentage. That's at least how I see it. I don't know, Norm, if, if you have a differing opinion. Yeah, no, I, I see it definitely as helping. But what you need to do is make sure that you give uh, DSP a chance to kick in. Make sure that your campaign managers are working and understanding or starting to build up that audience. So it might take a month or two months or three months. but to be, uh, uh, I don't want to say the word transparent, but what you have to do is you have to make sure you take all these other costs into consideration. You're going to be paying a possible flat fee. You're going to be paying a possible percentage of sales. And you have to take that into consideration when you see that report that says you have X number of ROAS, um, because that could be misleading. Uh, so, but if you have those types of sales, uh, I would probably be taking a look at it. I know your your products, Simon. I know some of the products anyways, but uh, that would probably be helpful. And uh, if you're not looking at Google yet, um, depending on where you want to shoot the business to, over to your website or over to Amazon, you might want to look at that. And also, by the way, um, do you have a Google Business Profile? And then you can shoot it over to whatever site you want or all sites. Um, plus, uh, it'll go on to uh, Google Shopping. So you might want to just check that out, and that's free. But uh, take a look at uh, at the numbers and see if it'll make uh, like make sense for you, depending on how many sales you're getting. And then you could just monitor how many sales are you getting from the uh, from the report. And you'll get that. Like in the report, it'll tell you, you made 20 sales, you made 200 sales. Um, with some of the products that we have, like I said, it's just been night and day difference for some of the, the uh, clients. And it is something to explore. Okay. Uh, we've got just a couple more questions. Uh, we are in the pet category, mostly food. Uh, we're new and around five months old. Do you think this would be good for us? Absolutely. I mean, um, I, I love the pet category. Every time we bring on a new pet client, I get excited just because I do feel like there's such a high demand on Amazon, even though it, it is competitive. I just love that there's a high demand. Um, I, you know, I talked about this a lot throughout the, 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 the call here, um, but repeat purchase products are amazing 
for DSP. So if it's pet food and things like that, that's killer because that means that you can, you know, obviously you can bring back and target your past purchasers. You can try to get them to subscribe to your products. But then also, I mean, based on your comment, it sounds like you've got a variety of products. So that means DSP, we could do cross promotions, try to get people to purchase, you know, not just one of your products, but multiple. So I feel like that would be an ideal fit uh, for DSP. And subscribe and save. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's awesome. Um, five months. Yeah. All you have to meet uh, is the criteria that Jenna was talking about at the very beginning, and that should be good to go. Okay, um, this one is from Saad. Uh, is there any specific category for which DSP is performing well? Do you have any case studies around those? Yeah, so honestly, I wouldn't say specific categories do necessarily, like I wouldn't, again, I think it goes back to repeat purchase products. So when you think about that, you think about uh, obviously foods, beverages, um, supplements are a big one. Um, really, I would argue it's not necessarily the category, but types of brands. So brands that have just a singular product um, and don't really have that cross sale opportunity or don't have that repeat purchase opportunity, those, in my opinion, don't do as well as those that have those things, right? That have those attributes, the cross selling options, the subscription options. So in my opinion, it's not necessarily a category thing, but more how brands are built. And it's just, it's got the same restricted categories as Amazon. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else, Kels? All right. I think we might have touched on this with Simon's other question. Yeah. Uh, but is DSP just for Amazon? Would there be a conflict of interest if I'm running a digital marketing strategy that's focusing on my website? So... DSP, you are able to just target Amazon um, spots or placements, not spots, placements. You are able to say, I just want my ads to run on Amazon. And we actually have plenty of brands that do that. They don't want to interfere with any Google ads they're doing or Facebook ads. So we do have brands that do decide that Amazon DSP is just for Amazon. It should only be doing those placements. So that is an option. Um, if, if that is what you want to do. Okay. So I think that's it. Why don't you give us your contact information? So if people want to get a hold of you, they can, and then we'll go over to the wheel of Kelsey. Sure. Yeah. So if you guys have any questions um, about anything I talked about today, you are more than welcome to reach out to me and my team. So the contact for that would be hello, H-E-L-L-O at turnkeyproductmanagement.com. And again, you're also, everybody is able to claim the free giveaway, which is turnkeyproductmanagement.com slash talk. Um, you guys can, you know, obviously reach out to us at the hello email if you want, or you can schedule that free audit. All right. Fantastic. Okay. Kels, let's go to a sponsor and then let's go to a, the wheel, but... Just a last reminder, uh, I see that we have quite a few listeners right now. If you, if this is the first time on the podcast, uh, we do a giveaway, which is coming up next. Uh, hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. Tag two people. You get a second entry. You got 30 seconds to do it. And Kelsey, let's go to the sponsor. This episode of Lunch with Norm is sponsored by Rebate. Attention sellers and brand owners want to reach more shoppers and boost sales. Rebate's platform connects sellers with shoppers seeking great deals on new products. They make it easy to offer promotions, handle rebates, and ensure seamless redemptions. With countless reviews from satisfied customers, Rebate is the go-to solution to increase your sales. Visit Rebate.com today and start reaching more shoppers. Now let's get back to the show. Okay, we are back. Kelsey, where are you? All right. Yes. Uh, I think it's time for the Will of Kelsey. All right. It's time for the Will of Kelsey. All right. So thank you, everyone, for signing up 
on today's Wheel of Kelsey. We do this every single podcast, so make sure you come back Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and you can enter again. A lot of entries today. Uh, so let's give this a spin. Yep, and this is for the $500 press release and blog article. Beard. Looks like Redbeard got it. <laughs> All right. Congratulations, Redbeard. You know what to do. Uh, email me, k at lunchwithnorm.com, um, and we'll connect you with the, your free press release and article. And also, a reminder, uh, we have a giveaway for everyone. So if you want to sign up um, for the Turnkey Product Management Audit, um, the link is in the comment sections. So sign up. It's free. Take advantage of it. And that's it. All right. We're good to go. All right, Jenna. Well, thanks a lot for uh, coming on to the uh, podcast today. Uh, it's the first time we ever discussed DSP. So I'm <laughs> glad you were able to uh, come on and talk about it. Absolutely. Thank you all so much for having me. And thank you all for listening to your awesome questions. Um, it was awesome talking to you about DSP. Want more great information? Don't forget to subscribe by clicking here. Also, if you want to check out our latest podcasts, click over here.